So, I boarded a train, kissed all goodbye. Hey y'all, what's going on? I hope you all are well out there and in good health. So for those of you who are new around here, I am Jaren. I'm a voice teacher, speech trainer, and the founder and owner of this imaginative studio, the Jaren M. LeGuerre Studio. So I saw this video on Twitter years ago when Solange's album, When I Get Home, came out. There's an interlude on that album called S. McGregor, and on that interlude is some voices that are pretty familiar that I didn't know were familiar until after I saw this video that I saw on Twitter. So I was on Twitter scrolling on my phone and I saw the video pop up of the original audio from that interlude and I said oh, that's them I had no idea it was them so I was like I really want to do a video on this but never got around to it for like three years but we're going to get around to it today and I'm doubly excited about this because this is something that I wanted to offer on this channel more and more which is speaking voices not just singing because yes yeah, singing is great I love singing obviously but our speakers our actors our poets our rappers are just as important of voice users as singers so I want to talk about all types of voices all types of vocal art forms on here so I'm excited to talk about these two legendary sisters. So y'all, here is Debbie Allen and Felicia Rashad reciting a poem called On Status, written by their mother, Vivian Ayers. So, I boarded a train, kissed all goodbye, oh, and then my please. heart was a sympathetic sigh. Oh, for I would go and live in a city where people and hearts and buildings were bigger. So one thing I love about this video here is the contrast in these sisters' voices. You can hear Debbie's voice is a little bit higher than Felicia's. Just naturally, I feel like Debbie's has more of like a higher larynx, a little bit more of a higher structure than Felicia's has a little bit more of like a deeper, warmer structure to her voice. Both voices are great in this poem and both voices exemplify and animate this poem in such a cool way. But you can definitely hear a difference in their voices in terms of the contrasting pieces. Though they have very similar attributes, they still have very contrasting attributes as well. So Debbie's presentation is more, I boarded the train, kissed all goodbye, a little more melodic, a little more lighter in essence. But then Felicia's voice, and in my heart was a sympathetic sigh. She's differently articulate than her sister here. When she said things like sympathetic sigh, it had a bit more of a breathier undertone, which kind of gave some different energy to her words versus Debbie's was kind of boarded the train, melodic, almost like a paint stroke of vocal inflection. Boarded the train, kissed all goodbye. And at the end of that second stanza right there, when Felicia said bigger, it wasn't bigger, Bigger. So in bigger, the R was lessened, kind of omitted pretty much. There was a breathy undertone again, and it kind of gave the sense of bigger. How she got her head up and said bigger versus bigger. You know, bigger just sounds so boring compared to bigger. It gives a lot more animation to the voice in that way. They remain to work and toil in, in a, a town, town whose thriving was, was of soil. For long it worked. I knew no distress. I even dared to write them less. If you listen intently, Felicia's larynx, I think, sits a little bit lower than Debbie's. Felicia's larynx has a little bit more of a lower position, and I feel like her false vocal folds kind of sit a little bit more retracted. So I feel like because of that warmth, there's a false vocal fold retraction, so almost like a yawn in her throat, and then a lower larynx right there. Ah, kind of gives you more of that smoother, lower sound, as opposed to Debbie's, is a little bit more higher and a little bit more brighter. Nothing is wrong with either one, of course. They're amazing people and amazing voices, but they're just different, you know? <laughs> we need an eye for old folk degenerate. Who's living and thinking we're way out of date. <laughs> then, one quiet day I found all of me confusion bound. <laughs> and I love how they're using the piano accompaniment, which, by the way, is their brother, from what I understand. So it's their brother playing the piano and those two reciting this poem to their mother who taught them this when they were little from what I understand. So I think it's such a cool moment to have on tape. But I love how they're kind of using the musical undertones to kind of rap it a little bit. When they say those lines together, they're kind of singing it on rhythm, if you notice, right? They're singing on rhythm a little bit. Bottoms as high as Jack's beanstalk and no one with whom to talk. So they built up on that word beanstalk with no one with whom to talk, right? And they got back breathy, lighter. All these inflections and all these nuances and things like that really give life to the poem here, right? Because whether you know it or not, when you speak, you're making pitch. It may not be as predetermined as singing is, you know, or like as music is, but when you are speaking, you are making pitch. Otherwise, you'll not be able to hear me. Pitch is just frequency. 
Pitch is just vibration. Pitch has nothing to do with music in essence, but we make pitches in music, obviously, and they're way more premeditated most of the time, you know, because there's a vocal line and whatever the case may be. But even when we speak, we make pitch. A lot of times people, for some reason, disassociate singing and speaking to the point where they feel like things have to change so much when it comes to singing than when it comes to speaking. Your anatomy does not change between singing and speaking. The use of the anatomy may be modified, but the anatomy itself, the physicality, the physical makeup of your voice or your vocal apparatus, your vocal instrument, it does not shift or change when you sing or speak. So for whatever reason, we sometimes take the easiness of speaking and take it away from the concept of singing. And I tell my clients all the time, when you speak, you have full pitch, you have duration, you have grammatical, you know, nuances and things like that. And you can have that same easiness when we sing. So why disassociate the easiness of singing from the easiness of speaking when you can just have them both be just as easy. So many of you don't know this, but I'm actually a professor of voice in musical theater at a few universities. And so one thing that I always notice when I have my students who come for private lessons will take voice and speech class as a musical theater student and then come to me in a private lesson and say, oh, we talked about that in the voice and speech because it's literally the same mechanism, literally. So the same mechanism you use to speak and act is the same mechanism you use to sing. Literally. So for whatever reason, we disassociated singing and speaking and we don't need to disassociate it that much. All that to say, you make frequencies, you make pitch when you speak. So be intentional about that too, just as much you are about that singing. My dilemma was all my own. No counseling, Dad. No kindness shown. And for once, I knew my real and true status. Cockroach. In the park theater. So they said at the park theater, not at the park theater. And you notice when they come together, they get a little more unison. They get a little more on the same wavelength in terms of pitch and things like that because they're saying something together. And now my heart knows no delight like a trip back to the old home site. And now she's smiling. My heart knows no delight. There's a little bit more smile and a little bit more of a lifted pitch in her approach too. There's a smile and a lifted pitch. So it's kind of giving you some buildup in terms of like the reflectiveness and the narrative of this poem itself. And not for money would I scoff at a screen door hanging off. At a screen door hanging off. So she had an H on hanging, but then had a little growl. Hanging off. You can put those little nuances in speaking too. You see? I talk about growling and squalling all the time. She put the growl in her speaking. That shows emotion, right? So you can do those same nuances in speaking as you do in singing. Oh, they got no big tall sky scrapers. Clowns in nightclubs cutting capers. <laughs> It's home, the folk are warm, and most important, I belong. I belong. I belong. If you enjoyed this analysis, click subscribe down below and click the alert button next to it so you know when the next video is posted. And as I will always keep saying to y'all, be vocally bold, creative, and aware, but most of all, be vocally you. All right, y'all, see y'all very soon.